Okay, so for the Calvin Cycle Worksheet, we're going to fill in these blanks. Um, probably should give you a word bank on this one, but I'm just going to work through it here to make sure that you guys got all the stuff. So what we want to do is we'll pretty much start up on the top side right here and just work our way around until we get everything done. So this is called the dark reactions. You just did the quiz on the light reactions. And this is where we're going to see ATP and NADPH, your two major products to come from the light reaction that you circled yesterday. Those are going to be put um, to work right in this cycle here. So um, starting with the top, three molecules of carbon dioxide. This is where carbon dioxide comes in. Let's just call it CO2. Combines with a five carbon molecule. And we're going to go ahead and put the abbreviation too. It's called RUBP, which stands for ribulose bisphosphate. And this is something that's going to be made and recycled within this Calvin cycle. Calvin cycle is named after Melvin Calvin. Love the name. And this is an American biochemist who figured this thing out. So you get a five carbon molecule that carbon dioxide is going to be combined with. Okay, so that's a key thing. Now, there's an enzyme that's needed in order to do this, and it has another great name to it. And, and I'm going to make sure we, we put it out in a way that it makes sense. So go capital R-U, and then capital B-I-S, okay, and then C-O. Okay, that is an abbreviation for the enzyme, which stands for ribulose, which is this five-carbon sugar here, bisphosphate carboxylase. Bis means that there's two. Bi means two. Okay, and then the CO refers to carboxylase. So this is an enzyme. How do you know it's an enzyme? From the name. Ribulose bisphosphate carboxylase. ASE ending. Okay, anytime you see ASE ending, from now on it's an enzyme. When we get into DNA, there's a lot of enzymes. They all have ASE for the name. You know immediately it's an enzyme. Okay, this forms an intermediary compound that splits to form six molecules of, all right, this looks like, um, professional golfing association, but it's called 3-PGA. 3-phosphoglyceraldehyde is what that stands for. Okay, so this little molecule right down here, you get six of those. Okay, six of these 3-PGAs. So there's a lot of rearrangement that takes place within these molecules. Okay, after this, you're going to get these molecules. They're going to combine with phosphates. So should we abbreviate those two? Yeah. PO4 is what phosphate is. Oops. Okay, so phosphate group is what it combines with. And when that happens, okay, those phosphates are coming from ATP. So the ATP that was made in the light reaction is now going to be used in here, okay, where number six is at. In fact, let's go ahead and write some of these things in. I've been forgetting to do that. Right here where this little, looks like a um, comic book, power or, uh, or in the comic books they have when someone gets hit, you have this little sort of star that, that forms right there. That's ATP, high energy ATP. What do you suppose it's converted into? If it loses a phosphate, well, ADP, okay, it stands for adenosine diphosphate where before it was a triphosphate. So it gives up a phosphate right to this three carbon molecule right here. Also, let's go ahead and just annotate this so we can follow it a little bit better. This is CO2 up here, so carbon dioxide enters into this cycle. Okay, this molecule over here is the RUBP, ribulose bisphosphate. And then this is the enzyme that aids, which is Rubisco. Okay, so it looks like that so far. Okay, what this ends up forming is 1, 3. Okay, and the numbers indicate the carbons. If you remember, we built the carbons a while ago in lab. That's what it refers to. So 1, 3, B, P, G. Okay, that stands for 1, 3, bisphosphoglycerate. So in other words, each, each of these have a unique name to them. I'm not worried about you memorizing these. I mean, there's a few things we'll memorize, like Rubisco is the enzyme being important. You know what ATP is and ADP? These are just names that we're going to attach to these molecules. So let's go ahead and we'll put that right here.
Okay, going down below, this is where we're going to get our um, abbreviations. So we're going to go ahead and put this 13BPG in there. Bisphosphoglyceraldehyde, glycerate, sorry. Okay, and it says it is reduced, meaning it has electrons added to it. That's what reduction is. Using, and we'll see this molecule here again, NADPH. Okay, that was made in the light reactions. Okay, NADPH goes right up into here. Okay, so remember NADPH is carrying electrons from water for the first part of this cycle. And this ends up forming what we used to have, NADP plus from the light reactions. Okay, and then what comes off from here, okay, in this particular part, is a phosphate. So we're just going to call that PI. Okay, so you lose a phosphate. Okay, so when we do this, we're going to get a new molecule, which is probably the most important one. It's called G3P, glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. And we're going to go ahead and label that right next to that molecule. So this G3P, we're going to see this now. We're going to see it with your, your cells, your mitochondria. This can be turned into a variety of things. It can be turned into fats. It can be turned into proteins. It can be used as energy. It can be used to make carbohydrates. Pretty much whatever the plant needs, this is where it starts. This is the building block of everything else. This is the Lego piece right here that can be used to build a castle. Right? These are the things that, that you're going to see being important. Okay, so what we're going to go ahead and put down below, this is still G3P. So I'm just going to label it as such. And then from G3P, we can make a lot of stuff, right? You can make fats, proteins, carbs, and energy. Okay, so those are the main things that you can make with G3P. Lots of stuff. Now, notice that one of them goes off, but you still have five that move on. Okay, so we're going to reuse this label again. Okay, this molecule is still G3P. So this one's G3P, this one's G3P, this one's, and the only difference is you got a couple of numbers that aren't quite the same. Okay, so let's go ahead and fill in the rest of this. G3P should really stand out as being somewhat important. Okay, G3P goes there. One molecule of G3P leaves the cycle as a final product, while the other molecule continues through the Calvin cycle. The five molecules are going to go through a series of reactions to become what we start with which is called RUBP. Which is then used to fix, which means to grab and put into the reaction carbon dioxide. Actually, let's go CO2. Let's stick with our abbreviations because I think it works better. Okay, back to this chart right here. We're going to put in water right here, so this is H2O. Actually, I don't know if that one, yeah, I guess that is H2O. I don't think that answer is right. I'm looking at the key and it says water. Let's, let's put in, well, we'll leave it for now. I'm going to check that. I don't know if it's right. What is, what is this one, though, right up here? We know this one. Uh, ATP. ATP. What's it converted to? ADP. Okay, so it goes from a charged battery to an uncharged battery. So you should be able to see that there's a lot of rearrangement that takes place within these molecules. Now you have these two um, phosphates on each side. It's a five carbon molecule. This comes back around to pick up a carbon dioxide that's coming in from the plant and this thing continues. So you have basically a lot of molecules reshuffling, a lot of changes that are taking place. Phosphates are added, they're taken off, but the key thing that you get out of this is G3P.
Okay, that's what everything else comes down to for the plant. Let's go ahead and finish filling in these blanks and then we're done with this worksheet. Okay, the G3P molecule. <laughs> Released from the Calvin cycle can be used to form um, glucose. That's typically the main product that we look at. And then glucose can be stored as starch molecules. Okay, so your overall answers, any questions, something that you missed? Yes. Tuesday. So this will pretty much wrap up photosynthesis. We'll uh, do a lab tomorrow. Start, we'll see what we do Friday. Maybe we'll do one more lab. I've got a pigment lab that's a good one. And we'll probably do some Kahoot on Monday. Test on Tuesday. Okay, now what you have to know, you know, would I give you this to fill in? Probably not. Okay, maybe these things on the side here. Maybe the circle things right here. Okay, the actual cycle. Because this cycle really is pretty toned down compared to what it could look like. Uh, I've seen some other ones that are much more detailed, but this is a pretty simplified one right here.